Hey, I'm going to invite you to take a seat and grab your Bible or your Bible app and turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians 5 is our text today. If uh, you're uh, in the room at Sweetwater and you don't have a Bible with you, that's fine. Grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you. If you're at our Parker campus and you don't have a Bible with you, there's a table right back there in the middle. Go ahead and, and jump up right now and run back there and grab a Bible and turn to page 1174. It's 1174, and you'll find 1 Thessalonians 5, and you'll be able to follow along with us. And, and as always, if you are uh, in one of our campuses and you don't have a Bible and you want one, take one with you. It is our gift to you. We want you to have the Word of God, read the Word of God, because we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. If you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible and you want one, please notify us, email us, let the service uh, hosts know, and we will get you a Bible, whether we mail it or deliver it. We want everyone to have God's Word so that God's Word can change their life. Uh, hey, before we dive into the message, uh, I just want to say it is great to see you. Glad you are here. Uh, you know, having services on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day is a little bit different and weird. There's a lot of churches not doing it. And we just decided to go ahead and do it. So I'm glad you showed up. Thanks for being here. It's good, good that you're, good that you're in the room. I, you know, it's no fun to preach to an empty room anyway. Hey, on January 21st, we're going to be having a vision meeting, a Calvary vision meeting, and everyone is welcome to come to this. You know, uh, this past year, especially the past six months, have brought a lot of change. And, uh, and you've had transition, we've had staff leave, and so things are different, and, but they're good, and I want to be able to share with you kind of where, where God is leading us in the next few uh, you know, months and years of our journey and where we're headed. So if you're interested in knowing those things, just mark it on your calendar, Saturday morning, January 21st, 9.30 a.m. at McCulloch Campus. It'll be right after the men's breakfast that morning. So, uh, and, and ladies, feel free to crash the men's breakfast. They won't throw you out. We don't care. Uh, and, uh, and so I just want to go ahead and let you know about that so you can be planning ahead as we're talking about a new year and uh, a new day. So, uh, by the way, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So it's kind of exciting. I saw one, uh, you know, celebratory hat earlier uh, as we were worshiping. Somebody was wearing a top hat, and they took it off for the sermon, I guess. So, uh, that, that's interesting, maybe for the prayer. But anyway, uh, New Year's is a wonderfully strange time of year. I, I don't know about you guys, but for me, New Year's is kind of a wonderful and strange time of year because on one hand, you've got parties, you've got travel, you've got family, you've got football, right? And all of it is mixed with this excitement and desperation. Let's just go ahead and call it what it is. We want the new year to be a good year, don't we? Is anybody hoping for a terrible 2023? Good, okay, you, you, they're, they're at home. Uh, so, so we want it to be a good year, and, and we resolve to do better than we did last year. You know, we're coming out of a season of gluttony, so we vow to lose weight and eat better. Right? Anyone with me on that? Okay. I see those guts. I mean, hands. Uh, we come out of a season of materialism, and so we vow to get out of debt and live by a budget for a change. Right? Anyone? Saying, like, yeah, I need to do that. I need to get there. See, we, we, we want to do better. And so we briefly, because we don't want to spend too much time, we look back at 2022. We look at our failures of the past year, and then we just hope to change everything. And we succeed for a little while, maybe a month, maybe two weeks, maybe three days. <laughs> so today I want to share briefly how to finish 2022 and how to start 2023 inviting God to work in our lives. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18 this is our text, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now, I think you ought to memorize this text. I think everybody ought to memorize this text. It's probably the easiest text to memorize. And then you can say, hey, I learned three verses this year. <laughs> right? Here's what Paul says as he wraps up this letter to the church at Thessalonica. He says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 
Now, I'm going to quote this multiple times in the service, and I learned it differently, so it's okay. I learned it, rejoice always, pray continually, and in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you who are in Christ Jesus. Okay, so that's how I learned it. So if I don't get it the way that ESV has it, forgive me. Because what I want to, by the way, I really am serious about it. You can memorize that. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. This is God's will for you. Right? You, you know what, these three things are God's will for you. So it, you can memorize that, and you, you don't have to. 1 Thessalonians 5 is easy enough to, to hang with it as well. So here's the, the first thing I want to challenge us to do is reflect on 2022 with gratitude. Just reflect on this past year with gratitude. That's the whole give thanks. After all, this is God's will for you who are in Christ Jesus. So if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, and you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins, and you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then, then give thanks. Give thanks for God's blessings in 2022. Um, give, give thanks for all those blessings that you had in 2022. And, and, and by the way, there, there's an old hymn, and I love the words. I never really was a big fan of the melody. I could sing it for you right now, but I'm not going to. I'll always leave some of you desperately wishing, but it's not going to happen. But it's called Count Your Blessings. And, and the chorus goes, count your blessings, name them one by one, Count your many blessings, see what God has done. How many of you know the song? Okay, a lot of hands. How come you're not at the 8 o'clock service? Anyway, <laughs> the, uh, see, counting your blessings is a wise practice. It's wise practice. And, and here's why. We tend to focus on the negative. All of us, it's, it's part of our sin nature, it's part of our human nature. When, when bad stuff happens, we tend to focus on the negative. We tend to focus on our failures, our disappointments, the things that went wrong, and we tend to, you know, kind of fixate on those things, and they kind of dominate our thoughts and our attitudes. Uh, all, and, and there's been too many studies to cite all of them, but what I know is they say that one negative comment made to somebody it takes about 100 positive comments to even it out. Isn't that crazy or what? I mean, you can get 100 compliments on your hair, ladies. You get a haircut. 100 people will say, oh, your hair looks great. One person goes, oh. <laughs> and suddenly you are like, oh, what's wrong with my hair? I don't, I don't know. Right? It, you, you guys know what I'm talking about? So we tend to fixate on the negatives. And that means that we're ignoring the blessings. And we do that in our life. And what that, that leads to is it causes us to complain rather than live with gratitude. And we focus on the negatives and we start talking about the negatives and it starts coming out in complaints. Because we're fixated on the things that are bad, that aren't working, that are not going right. And, and as we fixate on those things, they start coming out of our mouths and they start poisoning our lives. And here's what I know is you can either be a person of thanksgiving or you can be a person of complaining, but you can't do both at the same time. So which one dominates your life? And if it's not the gratitude one, then count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings and see what God has done. Now, I know the frustrations and failures and disappointments are real. I get that. I'm not trying to pretend like all that stuff didn't happen, but I also want you to know the blessings of God are real. And you're going to focus on one or the other. So, how many of you have a home to sleep in tonight? Okay. How many of you have enough food to eat? How many of you have too much food to eat? <laughs> right? Yeah. How many of you have people who care about you? See, these are blessings. How many of you know that Jesus has paid the price for your sins, he offers you salva salvation, and heaven is your destiny? Yeah. See, that alone is reason to rejoice always, pray continually, and in everything give thanks. Right? That, I mean, that's reason enough. 
So I know that God has blessed you this past year. Do you? Do you know that? Well, I see, and, I, and I'm asking because there's, there's a lot of times that we, we look back on the year and we think, oh, look at all this bad stuff that happened, and we fixate on that, and we miss the blessings. So reflect on God's blessings and, and, and give thanks for them in 2022, and reflect with gratitude for God's redeeming power. God's redeeming power. Look, 2022 had its share of disappointments, betrayals, illnesses, losses, and failures. Funny thing is, every year does. Every year does. So remember them, and then remind yourself of why you can still give thanks. And that reason is God's redeeming power. Uh, Romans 8, 28, the Apostle Paul says, for we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love him, to those who are called according to his purpose. For we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love him, to those called according to his purpose. So if you love Jesus, then that means that God is working to redeem your life. Now, please understand, it doesn't mean that God causes all things, but you know, we live in a sinful world where lots of bad stuff happens, so it's not always that God did something. But God is always involved in your life, redeeming your brokenness, putting the shattered pieces of your life back together to make something beautiful out of it. That's his promise to those who love him. That's an amazing promise. And, and so maybe you can already see some of the ways that God is redeeming your failures and your mistakes and your sorrows of 2022, or maybe it's too soon. But either way, God is working in your life so you can still rejoice because you know that it's going to get better because of his redeeming power. So let's reflect on 2022 with gratitude and let's look ahead to 2023 with expectation. I mean, we're saying goodbye to one year. We're saying hello to another year. Uh, it's a time where we hopefully, well, we want a great year, but, well, let me ask, do you want 2023 to be a great year? Okay, so we do. We want a great year. Then what are you going to do to make it happen? Then what are you going to do to make it happen? Because if 2022 wasn't all that you desired it to be, then what will you change to make this new year better? I know, it's kind of a sucker punch question, isn't it? We want it to be a great year. Now what are you going to do to make it a great year? Um, see, the truth is, and this is hard to hear, but this is how most of us are default-wise. I know I am. We don't want to change. We want the world to change. We want the politics to change. We want the economy to change. We want our boss to change. We want our spouse and kids to change so that we like the world around us better. So when we say we want it to be a great year, what, we say, what we're basically saying is, God, change all this stuff so that I'll be happy without having to change me one bit. Okay, that's, that's our sin nature and how our sin nature thinks, even for those of us who are in the church. We want God to change everything around us so that we're more comfortable. Can I just tell you, if that's your expectation, it's not going to happen. You should prepare for disappointment. Okay, because all that stuff, it's going to change, but probably not in the ways that you want it to change. Uh, I, I actually, I was writing the sermon and I read this joke, and I don't ever tell jokes because I'm terrible at telling jokes, but this one just stuck with me. And, uh, and, and so there was a lady, and she was praying, and she's like, God, I'm desperate, I'm, I'm in need, you know, uh, I, I, I don't have enough money, uh, you know, my car is broken down, I need to get it fixed, and if I, I don't fix my car, then I can't get to work, and if I lose my job, then how am I take care of things? God, just let me win the lottery. And she didn't win the lottery, and so the week later, she's praying, and she said, God, I'm, I'm getting more desperate now. My kids need medical care, and I can't afford it, my car, and my job, and, and you know, it, it's getting worse, and, and so can you please just let me win the lottery? And she doesn't win the lottery. <laughs> Next week, she's desperate. God, I'm going to get evicted. We're going to be homeless. We're not going to have enough food to eat. It, it's terrible. I just really need you to let me win the lottery. And God answers her. Verbally, he says, Okay, I'm going to help you, but I need you to buy a ticket. <laughs> now, just for the record, theologically, I believe that you can win the lottery without buying a ticket uh, if that's what God decides, all right? Just, just I, yeah, that's my conviction. God doesn't need us to do that. 
but it, it, it just caught me because now I'm thinking, you know what? God wants to do stuff in your life, and he's basically saying, hey, you're going to buy a ticket. Are you going to cooperate with me? So when we talk about looking ahead to 2023 with expectations, expect God to change your life. Expect God to change your life. But if you expect God to change your life, then you have to ask the question, what's my part in this? So I'm just going to mention some things that if you want God to change your life, you need to be embracing these and pursuing these. Uh, I mean, the first one is um, read and apply the Bible. Because if you read and apply God's word, what's God going to do? Change your life. Change your life. Uh, that was great because I got a text today uh, from, from uh, someone here at Calvary who said, hey, guess what? I just did something I thought I would never do. I read through the Bible in 2022. And I was like, that's awesome. That is so cool. And, uh, and then somebody else on the text thread said, great, do it again. <laughs> Which is what I was thinking, but I was trying to be more encouraging uh, in that moment. Because plus I knew I was going to preach it tonight anyway. Uh, see, see, here's the thing. Uh, read and apply God's word. And, and the, in, in the church, people are much better at talking about reading the Bible than they are about actually reading the Bible. People are much better at talking about and arguing about things in Scripture than they are at reading and applying Scripture, which is why we have a problem with the way we live in the midst of our, our communities. And so I want to challenge you to, in 2022, to read through the Bible. Now, personally, and, and I've invited my life group, and by the way, if you're a life group leader, this is a great moment to you know, do that, but I've invited my life group, I've invited uh, other pastors on the team to join with me in reading through the Bible, and I read uh, on version. so hopefully all of you have version. I do the Nicky Gumbel classic read through the Bible in a year. Now, Nicky Gumbel is the guy who created Alpha. We use Alpha as a, as a teaching class. If you're new to faith, then Alpha is a great class for you to take. And it's got a devotion so that if you don't understand the scriptures, he can help you understand some of it. Now, if, if you're like, I already know what this is all about, then just skip the devotion. You just do the Bible reading. It doesn't matter. But the thing is, you got to actually plan to do it. You're not going to just wake up you know, in the morning I go, oh, I should read through the Bible. What do I need to do to do that? None of us know how to do it on our own because uh, you don't know how many chapters you need to read and which, it's just, it, do one of them. There's like a dozen you can choose from on version. But get with some friends, get with your family, get with your life group and say, hey, let's do this together. Let's provide accountability, encouragement, incentive to read and apply God's word. So you have to do the first part, which is read it. If you're saying, hey, I can't read through the Bible, fine. Read through the New Testament. Read a chapter of the day of the New Testament and you'll finish sometime in, in September. Okay? That, that, I mean, that's, that's a goal. Set a goal and read and apply God's word. And if you want God to change your life, secondly, join a life group. Okay? Join a life group. We're going to have life group signups uh, starting next weekend and the weekend after that. We would love for everyone to be in a life group. We got most of you in life groups, but we want everyone to be in a life group. We gotta develop more online life groups, so if you're online with us, we're, we're working on that. But, but we need to do that, because one who walks with the wise becomes wise. But the companion of fools suffers harm. And, and so, you know, if you join a life group, then you're gonna be surrounded by people who love Jesus and want to do better, and are looking for someone else to encourage them to do better as well. Plus, you got friends who love Jesus, and you got people who care and who will, who will help you on this journey. So read the Bible and apply it. Join a life group. And if you want God to change your life, serve in a ministry. Serve in some kind of ministry. I don't care if it's a weekend ministry that helps make all this happen, or if it's a weekday ministry or a special event. Get involved in serving. See, the reality is most of us are selfish in our use of our time and we miss out on the union with Jesus found in serving others. Now, if you're doing those three things, reading and applying God's word, you're in a life group and you're serving actively, you're probably already seeing God work in your life. You could probably affirm that and talk about how God has changed your life. Now, if you're not doing those things, I, I dare you to embrace these habits and watch God work in your life. Watch God work in your life. Oh, one more life-changing choice that some of you need to make, and that is to repent and go to celebrate recovery. Okay? 
Monday nights, 6.30, right here at Sweetwater Campus. Uh, you are welcome, and you are wanted, and they can help you figure out some of the things that are holding you back from experiencing the goodness of God that you want to have. So expect God to change your life in 2023, and expect God to bless your life in 2023. See, God is with you if you're a follower of Jesus. God is for you, and God wants to bless you. Those are all great things. Here's the reality, though, because most of us, when we start hearing God wants to bless you and God, we want God's blessings, what we do is we fill out a list, kind of like it's Christmas, and we give it to God and say, here's how I want you to bless me. <laughs> so I've got good news and bad news. The good news is God wants to bless you. The bad news is he'll never do it on your terms. You don't get to tell God, here's how to bless me. What we get to do is surrender to Jesus, follow him, and he will bless us. Okay, this is the trust part, because when you surrender to Jesus and you follow him, then he's going to bless you, but you're trusting God to bless you the way that is going to bless you the most, not the ways that you think you want to be blessed. Now, the Bible is full of directions on how to live a blessed life. That's why we encourage you to read and apply it. But I want to begin or, you know, just focusing on where it starts. And, and that's what Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. What other things? All the things you worry about. For the people of Jesus' time, it was clothing and food. He said, all the things that you're anxious about, I'm going to take care of those if you will put me first in your life. So put God first. Return to your first love. 2,000 years ago, Jesus put you first. When he took your sins and my sins upon himself and suffered and died on the cross. And see, you're forgiven. And heaven is your destiny because Jesus made saving you his priority. If Jesus made saving you his priority, shouldn't we make following him our first priority? So put Jesus first. You'll be blessed. It's really not a mystery. It's not like some kind of secret you need to learn. It's just a decision that you need to make. It's really not hard, but it's about making it a habit. So seek first the kingdom of God, and Jesus will take care of the rest. Today, I just want to challenge you, surrender to Jesus. Now, if you're here or you're joining us online and you have never surrendered to Jesus, then I would love for you to surrender to Jesus the first time. Start 2023 off <laughs> with the best decision you can ever make. And that's just by saying, Jesus, I need you to save me. I need you to change my life. I'm yours. If you make that decision today, we'd like to know about it. Grab a Connect card, fill it out. Let the prayer team know. They're going to be here at the end of the service. Find one of the pastors and tell us, hey, today I decided to surrender to Jesus. We'll rejoice with you. If you already know Jesus, then this is an opportunity for you to surrender once again. Let's pray. Father, thanks for loving us. Thanks for saving us. Thanks for sending Jesus into this world to, to be the sacrifice for our sins and to give us hope and life. And, and Lord, we want to follow you. We want to obey you. We want to serve you. We want to give our lives to you. So meet us in this place. Let your Holy Spirit move in this room. And as we remember your death and resurrection, God, as we surrender again to you, speak because we're listening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.